Welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Topic with Pure Line Teacher and Services. Today we'll be looking at a biology um, past paper, which will be a paper two. So we'll be looking at question three here. The first thing they're asking us to do is to define each of the following terms. So they want to know what a stimulus is, what a receptor is, and what an effector is. If you can recall, this is all based on that topic of irritability in the syllabus. And we had to learn all of these terms referring to our sense organs as well as the different types of neurons and what they do. So what exactly is a stimulus? Well, that stimulus is any change that is detected and it would lead to a response. So this change could be either internally or externally. Then what is the receptor? Well, remember we have five sense organs. So the receptor is the part of an organism which is able to detect the stimulus. And this would be like um, any of our sense organs or the tips of the roots and the shoots where we know this is the growing areas of the plant. And finally, the effector. What is the effector? Well, the effector is a part of the organism that is able to respond to whatever the stimulus or the stimuli is. And in animals, we know that this would either be like the muscles or the glands. And in the plants, again, it would be the tips of the roots or the shoots. Next, we have part B. So figure one is a diagram of a section through the human eye. So they're showing us the blind spot. We have the lens. So what they want us to do, the first part, label each of the following parts of the eye on figure one. So they want us to label the pupil, the ciliary muscles, the retina, as well as the optical nerve. So where exactly is the pupil? Let's label that. So we have this here would be the pupil. So I'll just put P, right? So this would be our pupil. Where's the ciliary muscles? So we know we have ciliary muscles as well as suspensory ligaments. This white part here, this would be the ciliary muscle. So we have ciliary muscles at the top and the bottom. So we just have to label one, right? So that would be the ciliary muscles. Where's the retina? The retina would be to the back. So we label the retina here, right? And finally, where is the optic nerve? This would be the optic nerve here. So this is the optic nerve. And I put R here for the retina. So simple enough, that would be our four marks. So part two, why is X called the blind spot? So here is X. Look at where X is located, right? So we know at the retina, what allows us to be able to see um, or to detect light is the sensory cells that are there, which are our rods and our cones that allows us to see um, color and as well as black and white and all the shades in between. So that would be all the shades of gray in between that black and white. So we have the retina there with the rods and cones. But at the blind spot, there are no sensory cells. So if there are no sensory cells here, then even if light falls there, there is nothing to receive that information. So this is why X is called the blind spot, because there are no sensory cells at that spot. Then C. A boy looks up from reading his book to see a helicopter flying in the distance. So account for the changes that would occur in the lens of both his eyes to enable him to see the helicopter. 
So what is changing here or what is going to respond to this is the ciliary muscles, the suspensory ligaments, and by their actions, it is going to change the shape of the lens. So remember when we are looking at something that is close, what is the state of these things that I just mentioned? So when we're looking at something close, the ciliary muscles are contracted but these suspensory ligaments are slack or they relaxed and the lens becomes fatter. This happens because light coming in from near objects coming in at a divergent angle. So therefore, we have a lot more refraction to do to get the light rays to bend properly to aim or to fall directly on the retina. But when we're looking at something far, so just like the boy, you know, he's looking away from the book to something at a distance. Remember, light rays coming in from an object at a distance comes in at a parallel angle. So we don't have much refracting to do. And therefore, the lens is supposed to be thinner. So what happens to get the lens thinner? But it's simply the opposite um, of what happened with the... Um, lens or with the suspensory ligaments and the ciliary muscles when we're looking at something close. So the ciliary muscles would relax while the suspensory ligaments would contract or be pulled tight and this will allow the um, lens to be pulled thinner to accommodate for the change and the fact that he's looking at something at a distance and the angle that the light rays are coming in to allow it to fall directly on the retina for him to be able to see this object. Then part D, so this final part. So figure two shows two eyes labeled A and B under different light conditions. This here is showing us, remember, the pupil effect. So when we're in um, bright light or when we're in dim light, there's a difference in terms of the size of the pupil. So this is what they're asking us here. They want to know which of the eyes in figure two, A or B, shows the appearance of an eye that has been exposed to dim light. And they want you to explain your answer. So what would it be? Would it be A or B? The answer would be A. So if you think about it, when we're in dim light or when we're in a place that is sort of dark, we still need to see. We have to be making sure that we don't bump into anything or damage ourselves. So we need a lot of light to enter into the eye. And therefore, the pupil is going to be wider. Right? So how is this happening? Remember, we have our radial and circular muscles in the iris, and this is going to control the size of the pupil. So when we're in a dim place or a dim environment, the pupil is going to be opened wide to allow as much light as possible to enter into the eye for us to be able to see the environment. While this here represents the person in a very bright environment or um, environment that is well lit. So the pupils are going to be smaller. And this is because we have a lot of light in the environment and we don't want to damage the um, cells at the retina. We don't want too much light coming in at the same time. And that actually answered this last part here, which is why is it important for the eye to respond when exposed to very bright light? So that's what I just said there. We don't want too much light entering the eye to damage the cells or the sensitive cells that are there at the retina. Okay, 